As much as I love this meter, we have to go over some of the drawbacks compared to other meters. And well, one of those is this ridiculous offset. Sometimes it can be up to one amp of an offset. So you always have to zero the meter before measuring. And if you have a very noisy source of current, you can see we're pushing like 10 amps into a battery here. And this meter is like correct. And here you can see it's absolutely off. Like over six amps, it's off if you're in this lower range here. If I range up, we are kind of spot on if you wouldn't have to offset. So yeah, you have to be mindful of that when you have like a very noisy current source with some frequencies on it. You might run into issues when you measure more than 6 amps. That's what I found. When you are in the 2 amp range and you want to measure currents above 10 amps, well, it should show overload if you're on the wrong range. But sometimes it does not show overload when you are in the 10,000 count mod. And that has to do with the calibration from the factory. Some meters just don't support 10,000 count. And I can recommend to set 6,000 count. This is very stable. And you won't run into any issues with 6,000 count. If you need more than that, well, you can go for 8,000. That's also fairly stable, I found but 6000 is even better. Sometimes in one direction measuring the current this way, it's absolutely wrong. But taking the other way around, it actually shows correct values. So what is this? When you are measuring currents with PWM frequencies, above 6000 count, you might run into instabilities where it only displays like 6 amp, but the actual current is 9 amps. So, yeah, I would say the 6000 count mod is the safest mod. And above that, it's more like a bit experimental, I would say. But it still works. And if you don't work with PWM frequencies or noisy power supplies, then it's no issue whatsoever. And you can also apply eight, nine, ten thousand count mod. One commenter gave me the hint that it might not be accurate above 150 amps. So he's actually right. And I want to show you. So I'll increase the current. And you can see that up to 150 amps, it's the, yeah, the reading is very similar. But above that, it might get yeah a bit off, especially above 180. You can see that there's already yeah seven or eight amps of a difference. Increasing further, you can see now it's 100 amps of a difference. And now I'm maxed out with my power supply again. But yeah, 200 amps of difference. So be mindful of that. <laughs> the 1000 amp hack is not actually working as intended. You can measure higher, but it's not accurate anymore. Apparently due to the saturation of the iron cores, as discussed in the EEV block. And of course, this meter here yeah, you can end up with a massive offset. When we started, it was 0 0.2 amps. Now it's 1.2 amps. So a one amp offset if you go, if you're going to measure such high of a current. If the EE prom reader program throws an error, like not connected or the chip is empty, I can recommend you to shave off some of the plastic of this eight pin clamp here. Because this crystal here, this oscillator, is in the way a little bit. So 
What I did for my clamp is I shaved off some of the plastic here on the edge. You can do that with a file for example. Or you can also do it with a sharp cutter knife, but be careful. And then the contacts can actually make contact with the chip. And the second tip is make sure it's switched on. <laughs> It's easy to forget that you can switch it on volts or the 2 amp range and if it's not working try this one, try this one, try different ranges and usually the 2 amp range worked great for me. This is also a version of this UT210E that supports frequency measurements and it's the pro version and you can see here that it supports the frequency as well. But that's the only benefit you get out of this. And the clamps are in black instead of red. So you have to decide for yourself if it's worth the extra money. It's three times the cost of the normal meter. I think of ordering one for testing, but a viewer already wrote in the comments that he successfully modified the EEPROM chip. So yeah, you can also do the mods with this meter apparently. You could also find some rebranded meters with more functionality or different functionality. So this x -Tech meter here also has frequency measurement and also AC and DC. But this meter is also available in different versions. And if you check it out, it's the 61 or the 63 version. And as far as I can tell, the main difference is that the 63 supports DC current measurement and the 61 does not. So, well, does it justify this price difference? <laughs> I don't think so. You could probably just get away with buying this one and yeah, modifying your EEPROM chip a little bit so that you add the DC measurement range and that's all. But we don't know if it's the same EEPROM chip because it's a 6000 count meter and well, obviously they get, got rid of the bug where yeah, if you measure more than 2 amps and you zero the meter that it would go in overload and not show results anymore. But anyways, there is a third meter I want to talk about and it is the Waldcraft CV337 that is being sold as a 4000 count meter, roughly the same price than the UT210E. And you can see here, they modified the clamp mechanism a little bit. And therefore, it's for smaller wires, tight spaces, and it only measures up to 40 amps. But, well, you might also get rid of some of the noise in the background when measuring small currents. So that might actually have some measurement advantages. The accuracy is apparently not that great, with 3.5% in the 4 amp and the 40 amp range. And the UT210E is rated with 2%, but of course in a bit of a different range. I really hope I could answer most of the questions regarding this unity meter here and how to modify it. And in the next videos, I might want to go over some of the BMS. Well, <laughs> you can see I collected quite a lot of them over the years. And, well, I will save you some time not mentioning all of those. Especially those can be really garbage. Those ones and the pace BMS is also not my favorite. It does the job but it does not really balance the cells. So I think about saving you all some time and I will have a closer look at this BMS here. You probably know it from Seplos who is branding it 
It's the EMU1101 from SH Energy eTech. And so far it's the best regarding inverter communication and also balancing is working pretty well. And I figured out all the settings for the 10E version of this BMS, but also the older 10C version. And I will let you know which settings are the best for your inverter and the BMS and the batteries. Well, we also have some more cost, costly versions like this REC BMS, which comes with a huge coil and some pre-charge resistors and display options and yeah the BMS itself has a massive passive balancer in it which works actually pretty good of course even better than those ones here but if you have good quality cells well matched then these passive balancers are also plenty so stay tuned for the next one I'm looking forward to it